Okay. All right, so this is uh, chapter two. So, okay, uh, before we start, uh, maybe just to uh, review some of the important concepts in these chapters, so which is the uh, random variables. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let's look at the more general case over here. Okay, so just some revisions. Okay, number one, so we look at uh, definitions. 2.1.1. So for this, uh, we look at a more general case. Uh, supposing we have one sample, uh, one sample space with one sigma field, so a measurable space here. And supposing we have a function phi from omega to omega 1. Okay, of course, we consider. Uh, this sample space that is another sigma field here. Okay, so it's a mapping over here. So we said that uh, this phi is mesh, uh, measurable. Provided it fulfills these conditions. Uh, so it will be a reverse process. So maybe I just put it uh, the other way around, I hope you, can, you will agree with this approach, right? So that is uh, whenever, when B is an event in, okay, we are just putting like that. So that is when B is an event in F2, okay, F2 or Omega 2. Okay. So whenever B is an event in F2, so then the pullback or the inverse image, B inverse B is an event in F1 or F. So it's from F2, then go back to F by using the uh, reverse process for it. So this is a more general case. So, so in particular, when we take this to be R, and this will be our Borel sigma field, then it turns out to be the so-called the random variable. So then we come to here. So that is number two. Then we can say this. When we take uh, omega two to be R, and if we take the sigma field, F2 to be the Borel sigma field, then we say that uh, it becomes a random variable. So from here, then we can see that a random variable is a measurable real value function. So in other words, we can just simply say this. Random variable is a real value measurable function. So this is the general idea for it. So however, uh, we do have a much more easiest way to verify whether a given function is random variables or not. So which is, we're going to use uh, this theorem that is uh, more useful for it. Okay? So I'm going to combine uh, all this together. Okay, number three. So I'm combining a uh, theorem 2.2.2. Uh, together with uh, this remark. Okay, okay uh, supposing we have a function x is from uh, 
assemble space omega with sigma field f to r with Borel sigma field. From here to here. So if we have that, we can see uh, x is a random variable provided one of these following provided. So we don't have to all of them. So we just need either. one of this four holes. Okay, so one of them. So these four conditions, so we can either, the first one will be uh, okay, 2.1. So that is uh, X less or equals to B. So this is an event, okay, for any number B. Alternately, uh, maybe I shall put this one to be S2, just put a label for it. So instead of uh, X less or equal to B, so we can take this to pretty much uh, X strictly less than B. This. Okay, either one of it. So we can either take 2.1 or S2, or we can also take this. X is greater or equals to A. So the pre image for this interval is an event for all A here. Or we can take this. So X is strictly larger than A. So we can take uh, either one of them. So you, you can either stick for the first one or the second one and third one or the fourth one. So depends on the function that we wish to consider there. Okay. So this is the most important result or the theorem in this chapter. Right? So it provides a very simple criterion for us to check whether a given function is random or So that's why in here, in a way, mm, we may replace by it, so in a way, so you may just sort of like. So this is uh, not that important anymore, so maybe you can just uh, forget about it. Okay, this is, I would say that will be a working condition, so this is a general concept for it, okay? Okay, you can just follow that. Okay, so, so here's an example. So we have a, uh, uh, discrete and uh, this is some this uh, example of discrete random variable okay okay so come to this so this is for our general case okay so next we have a uh, this ah uh, uh, okay so this theorem so this theorem 2.2.3 uh, provide us a criteria for discrete random variable okay so maybe just stay here. So number three, four. So this is another important result. So we can use all this to test whether a function is a random variable. Okay, uh, for the first one, this theorem, theorem 2.2.2. So this is actually applicable to all the cases. Okay, so in particular, if we know a given function takes only discrete value or, or individual value. So we can use a much more easier way to test it. Okay, supposing uh, we have a X is a function from a sample space with a given sigma field to R equipped with, with the Borel sigma field. And we supposing X takes discrete value. Only, okay, we know this. Okay, so when we know it, uh, this good value, then we have a much more easier way to check whether this is a random variable or not. So then we can see uh, X is a random variable provided this is true. 
x equals to k. Uh, is an event, okay? For all images, k of x. Okay, that's the same. So uh, we have gone through several examples here for the discrete case. Okay? So this is uh, one example of the uh, non-discrete case. Okay, so again, let's come back to you. So in fact, we do have a lots of uh, 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 function that is that are randomizable. Okay, so um, okay. Okay. So and uh, next one, uh, maybe some important things for it before. Okay, so just some important. Okay, number five. So first of all, we know continuous. Function, okay. So including, uh, increasing. Functions or decreasing functions. Okay, as well as this, if you have also a comp, okay, maybe not to put it this way. So we have many of them. So maybe one by one A, so continuous function. Okay. So we also have a increasing or decreasing function. Okay. And also you can have uh, any, this kind of the combination. So, uh, some of the two run, uh, okay, all these are random variable. So, so you can say uh, sum of random variables, okay, or you can subtract, and also you can see a uh, product. Of random variables, okay, so or you can see a quotient of random variables and all these are random variables. So all this is uh, interesting. So we just here, we look at the maximum of several random variables as well as minimums of several random variables. Okay, so all this, and we know, are random variables. Okay, so which means actually uh, most of the function that you can tell, you can name, most of them are random variables. Okay, only those are very, um, what kind of very funny kind of function that is not random variable okay? under our uh, uh, standard scheme for our sample space okay? okay so we have uh briefly discussed the proof for this okay so okay so next we look at uh, another two uh, actually one two three three of them okay three important uh random variable okay so I think this is where we stop here. Okay, let's carry on here. Not for lecture. Okay, so this is uh okay, so especially so uh the interesting one will be this the maximums, okay, as well as minimums of if we consider several uh random error, so we consider the maximum value of them, so that will be a random error. So we also consider the minimum value among all these random variables, which is also a random variables. Okay. Okay, next we look at this, uh, the positive part and the negative part for a given uh, random variables. Okay, according to the definitions, 
the positive part. So we have two of them, the positive part and the negative part for it. Okay, uh, this is actually a bit uh, misleading, the negative part. It's in fact is positive value, okay? So just look at the definition will be given like that. So mathematically, so that will be, so the positive part of X, we just denote by X plus will be, uh, X multiplied this uh, indicator function corresponding to the set whereby x greater than zero. So that is, if you express it, that will be like this. So it will be zero whenever x less than zero, and which is equal to x whenever x greater or equal to zero. Likewise, the negative part for x, we denoted by x minus, so it will be this. Negative of x, when x is less than zero, and zero when x is greater or equal to uh, zero. Okay, uh, so maybe, uh, the idea for positive and negative parts for given function is not so clear by looking at these two um, mathematical definitions. Yeah. So however, if we demonstrate the picture that you should get the idea or the, how these two functions looks like. So for example, if we look at this. Okay, supposing we have a given function. So let's start off here. So let's say this is our fun. Let's say we have a graph, picture like that, okay? So let's say our graph of this function will be looks like this. Say our function looks like this. Yeah. So this say uh, uh, this is our x. The original uh, function is looks like this. So if we want to look at the positive part, so that means look at here. Uh, okay, whenever x greater than zero, we take x. Whenever less, x less than zero, we return value zero. So that means for these two part, we give it zero. So the graph will be looks like this. So this is a uh, x plus. Okay, so this is exactly the same. So whenever a perfect x exits, so that will be exactly the same. So we got things like that. So go down here. Okay. So for this, then we fill up with zero. Okay, similar. This is below the x exit, so we put it as zero. But up to here, when this go goes up, so then it turns to be. So this is the uh, positive part for our function. So that means we only taking the, the portion that is above the x-axis. So those portions below the x-axis, we level it to the x-axis here. Now, if we look at it, so then we can get the negative part. So that will be like this. So the negative part will be the other way around. So for those on top uh, above the x exit, so we put it here, level to the x exit. So it turns out to be like this. Up to here, and this will be zero. Okay. So whereas for the portion that is below the x axis, we sort of like uh, we reflected it like this up to here. 
So, so if I, we do the refractions, then it becomes like that. So this part, we do a refraction. So it becomes like that. And similarly, so this one, we do a refraction. To here and go down. Okay, so this is all. So this is why I'm saying that uh, it's a bit misleading, although we call it the negative part. If you look at the graph here, so uh, this function is actually always greater or equal to zero. Okay, so that this function always non-negative. And this is always non negative. So, whereas this has a positive and negative part. Okay? So, this is the positive part and negative part. So, I think the next is straightforward this remark. So, we have this formula x must be equal to uh, uh, x plus minus x minus. So, you can see uh, when you put a minus, right? So, you actually go, go down, go back to it. So I don't think I need to proctographize. So uh, let's say we change the color here instead of the green color. Okay. So this is the X, right? So if you look at minus of X, so uh, this will be level, no change, level, right? Minus of zero will be zero. So however, the positive one, it will go down here. And this one will go down. And you look inside it. Okay, so if you're combining this a green color portion and this, then it turns out go back to our x. So that's why from this graph, then you can see these conclusions. So x always equals to x plus minus x minus. Or you can put it this way. Uh, x plus will be x will be x plus plus minus of x minus. Okay. So next, uh, I I think you guys, I believe you guys know the meaning of model of X. Model of X will be, we just put F, look at the uh, many tubes on it. So that's why you can see a uh, model of X will be X plus plus X minus. So you just need to remember uh, that we have this. So modules of X is equal to X plus plus x minus okay or we better put this one so we have uh, two uh these mathematical uh, relations between these uh, modulus of x with x plus and x minus here so alternately um thing we can say x plus will be the maximum of x and zero x minus will be the maximum of negative x and zero so I just look at here, I think you get a picture. So you consider a uh, maximum of X and zero. So when you look at this part, uh, X will be always less than zero. So that's why we take zero, right? When we come to these portions, so this part's always larger than zero. So that's why we take this. So come to here, we have the same argument. Uh, this portion is less than zero. So that's why we take zero and here. So x plus will be given by this. Uh, x minus will be given by this. Okay, now we just go back to this. Okay, maybe here. And we have this. Okay, it's clear. X plus will be, uh, because we are only two of them, so we can say this is maximum of x and 0. Okay, and uh, x minus is uh, maximum of minus x and 0. Okay, next we go back to the result here. Okay, from here, uh, we have this theorem. So whenever X and Y are random variable, okay, um, maximum of X, Y is a random variable, okay? So we come back to this. 
based on our setting. So this is a random variable, okay? So a constant function is always a random variable, right? So if we look at here, then we can see x plus is a max of this. So this one is also a random variable. So this is the directly by uh, our theorems here. So this one. Okay, so this is by theorem. Okay, likewise, uh, x is a random variable, so that means we look at here, uh, we're taking a to be minus 1, b to be 0, so minus of x must be a random variable. So we know this is also a random variable. And 0 is a random variable. So I think you agree with this, right? So then we can see this is also a random variable. So by theorem, 2.3.1. So this one is also a random variable. So then now we know x plus is a random variable, x minus is a random variable. Yeah, based on uh, this, maybe be more specific, we look at uh, part B for this theorem. Yeah. Next, we look at here, modulus of x is x plus plus x minus. So here we know x plus is a random variable, x minus is a random variable, and here the sum of two random variables is a random variable. Then from here we can also conclude that this is also a random variable. So we by using theorem 2.3.1, but we are using uh, part A. Okay. So from this argument, then we can see x is a random variable, then x plus x minus and modules x are also random variable. So the argument uh, we directly from uh, theorem 2.3.1 A and C. Why pass C? Oh, okay, doesn't matter. So this is okay. So let's come back to here. So we can see actually a, a lot of function that we can tell are random variable. So which including x plus and uh, x minus and modulus of x as well. Okay, next we come to, this is actually the second topics for our chapter two here. Yeah. So this is uh, the first part. So we are talking about random variable and some of the properties of the random variable. Yeah. So the second part will be here, the distribu uh, probability distribution of a random variable. Okay. Maybe up to here. So then this is, uh, we discuss the concept of This is a, we discuss the concept of random variable and some of the mathematical uh, behavior or properties, okay? And uh, some examples of it. Okay, forget about the example, okay? So this is the first topic, eh? so we discuss, discuss this uh, random variable. Okay. okay, next. This is a uh, part A eh? in chapter two. Okay, next we come to this probability distributions of a random variable. Okay, so part B, then we discuss, um, how is it? Is it how to uh, we construct Oh, I see. Mm. It's like a a new probability. 
on R. So using a random variable. So this is a, a topic that we're going to discuss. Okay. So we uh, discuss how to construct a new uh, probability on R and using a new uh, random error. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, the probability probability that we constructed here. So this is actually uh, you have already seen this thing in your undergraduate uh, statistics course. So this thing is actually what we so call the distributions. Right. So, uh, which including uh, all these uh, so-called binomial distributions, uh, normal distribution, beta distribution, GF distribution, and blah blah blah. So, uh, all those distributions are actually belongs to here. Okay. That is, at first we have a given sample space, okay, and a given sigma field, and then we consider some kind of the random variable on that sample space and then we use that random variable to construct new probability and all those will be distribution okay in a way you can say a distributions is a probability which related to a random variable uh, so you can put in that way. Okay. okay so let's look at uh, the construction first okay before that so we have to ensure uh, the construction is a random, uh, is a probability on R. Yeah? Okay, so the setting will be like that. First of all, uh, let's say we have this. Let's say we have a sample space. Okay. Okay, so the setting like that. So given, so we have a x, we have uh, no x, we have an omega, okay. And then we have a f, f, okay. So then, this is already here. R, we know, uh, real numbers are already there, always there, and it's sigma field always there, okay. So now, let's say we have a random variable. We define a random variable is a function defined from R. So this is a random variable. And according to our setting, okay, so let's go back to here. What is a measurable function? So a measurable function is a function which pull back event from here and back to end event in here okay so that means uh, by using the inverse function so from here then based on here then we can this we have a b r and this one f so the inverse of it so it go back to it yeah we take any events here and come to another events over here okay but the different environment is sort of like uh, this is in one country. Okay, event is uh, somebody in this country. Let's say in, for example, in, in UK. So this is uh, Malaysia. Okay, uh, so okay, so this is sort of like it brings uh, one citizen in UK and go to another citizen in Malaysia. Okay, by using this process here. Okay, so event, event. Here. Okay, now and supposing we have a sample space with a few and Let's say we already know we have a probability measure over here. So this is a probability space. Yeah. So here we do not have a probability over here. Okay. So how we're going to uh, define it? So we're going to use uh, this process to construct this probability. Okay. So this one go back here and probability measure we know which is defined on here. So then we have a to R. 
Okay, uh, to be more precise, then this is a P2. This the close interval in zero to one. Okay, now we can see we're using this process. Uh, we come to here, we go down here, then we actually have a relations to link all the event to another event, to one event, to one probability over here. Okay, so it's a P of the event, right? Then we come to here, then using these two process we combine, then we can actually, we can define this, a new case. So that is from here, we come to here, back to zero, one. Okay, so this is S2. So we just simply call uh, the combination of these two process as Px. Okay, so uh, if we put it in terms of functions, so mathematically, so Px will be just P composite with the inverse form X. Mathematically, uh, we can express in this way. Okay, and forget about it. So using this way, then we have construct this uh, function. So we have constructed a function. Okay, so that is, uh, we just simply put uh, Px of anything here to be P of the inverse of this, okay? Whereas uh, we always take this to be an uh, event, uh, maybe a boreal set. Okay, so we have constructed this. So then before that, we need to verify uh, this Px is a probability measure. So under this construction, then we have here this theorem. So then we can see uh, this Px is a probability measure. Uh, on uh, So again, uh, what is mean by a probability measure? So then we have to go back to something. Okay, so this is uh, go back to the definition from probability measure. Okay, so a given function p from f to this is a proper measure if I only is satisfy uh, these three conditions. Okay, so that means we come back to this. We want to ensure this px will fulfill this one, two, three actions. Okay, so this is what we want to. Of course, uh, in in here we are taking uh, f to be we are okay so instead of uh, f so we are actually taking this to be our we are here okay so let's look, look at the proof for it okay so we want to verify uh, this three of it and also this p the given p is a proper brain measure so it's always fulfilled uh, these three conditions here okay so we do it one by one okay let's do the first one Okay, so Px of, okay, uh, because now we are doing this thing on R, right? So, so that's why now we are taking this to be our new omega. Yeah, so which is R. So P of R, okay, according to the definition of the P of X inverse R. Okay. So uh, R is a whole thing. So then you reverse back, that will be P of omega. 
So, and this is must be equals to one. Okay, so this is equals to one. So the reason is because we know P is a probability measure. Okay, maybe I will say P is a probability on omega. Okay, so this must be what it always will be. So that's why we get the first criteria pass. So we go to the second one. Next, uh, for a Borel set. So Borel set here means the event in R. So let's see, uh, B X of B. So it's the same definitions here. So that is P of X inverse of B. And according to, again, P is a probability on here. So P of any event must be larger than zero. So this one must be greater or equal to zero. Again, the same reason. So this is just simply because because of P is a probability on omega. Okay. Uh, and X inverse of B is an event on F. And lastly, we need to verify a uh, three. Okay, so supposing we have a uh, A1, A2, which are disjoint, okay, in event, then we want to show this uh, relation holds. So what we can do is, uh, we let, let's say, uh, A1, A2, and so on, are uh, disjoint. Or else that. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is very important. We only consider this job. Okay, so we want to show this uh, relations always holds. So then we can just do use to do the calculations. So then P X of union of all the A K. Again, according to the definition, so that is P of X inverse of all the AK. So again, we want to show uh, this is actually written in this way, right? Okay, next we go back to a uh, properties over here. So according to here, so we look at A. So whenever uh, inverse of A or B, we can put it in this way. So that means we can apply into here. We can actually sort of like take out this uh, union here. Okay. So then this is equals to P of union of all the x inverse ak okay so we have this so this is uh, actually by remark mm, 2.1.1 a okay we're using this value okay now because of uh, all these are disjoint and we can see these are disjoint then we also have not that this is also this joint. Uh, also this joint. 
event in Omega. Okay. So that is uh, straightforward because of when this is destroyed, so the pre-image or the inverse image must be destroyed. So when this is destroyed, then we can apply uh, this property to our P here. Okay. So then we can see P can become like that. Summating all the uh, K from 1 to infinity, P of X inverse of AK. Okay, so we make use of this property. And next, we use back to our definition. So this get back to summating P of X of AK. Okay, so we can see our PX fulfill uh, this property three. Uh, this is true for all destroyed event uh, AK. Okay, so uh, when one, two, three, all true for this uh, PX, then we can make a conclusion. And so this uh, PX is a probability measure on R. So this is how we get uh, this. Oh, actually, the proof is actually already here. So, okay, so I uh, just write that one more time, sort of like, uh, just need to change the symbol from B, uh, B to A, okay? the rest are the same. Okay, now we have verified like I said, let's look at our setting here. So actually, uh, first of all, uh, we begin with this uh, property space omega f and p. Then we use a random variable x to relate uh, this omega to r. And because of this is a random variable, we can use the inverse of this random variable to relate every Borel sigma field you, uh, sorry, Borel set in here, go to an event in F here. Okay, so it, we have a relationship between a Borel set in R and events in this original sample space. Okay, and according to our setting, this sample space or this sigma field always equipped with one probability space B. So this one already know. Okay. So we can use this X inverse combined with this P to construct a new PX. Okay. Okay. Now everything done. So first we can uh, sort of like we use X to relate to this. Okay. We have a relationship. Okay, maybe then uh, this F, we're going to relate to this by using the pre investment. Okay, then we can use this P to construct another probability to it. So something new, so that is a PX. So as we have already verified just now, this PX is a probability measure on R. Then using this omega F and P, we can construct a PX on R and PR. Okay. Right. So uh, this is, uh, we have discussed in here, 2.4. Okay. Once we have verified that this PX is a probability measure, and have a new probability space over here, R, B, and this PX. Okay. So we have a special title for it. Okay, so in this case, so uh, this PX that we have constructed, we just simply call it a distributions of X. Okay, so from here you can see uh, because um, this P always related or associated with a random variable, okay? It cannot be independent from anything. You have to 
uh, rely on one random variable to construct. Okay, so that's why we can say it's a distributions of x. So p x will be defined like this. Okay, next we can use this to define a new thing, so called the distribution function. Okay, why we want to have a distribution form? Okay, maybe later on I'm going to discuss it. Huh? Okay, so that's the proof. Okay. Next, uh, you know, uh, we have something so called DF, the distribution function, which is a capital X. This, I believe you know this, you have seen this before. Uh, next, we say uh, two random variable X and one are identically distributed if fx equals to fy. So we just use this. Okay, we forget about part three first. We look at the part one, part two, part A and part B. Uh, so if you look at here, px is actually on top of it. So we can see um, first omega and r, okay? x is a function from omega to r, right? So then the px is actually a functions from br to zero to one, okay? So uh, no issue, it's just that we are relate any event here or a Borel set to a probability here. Uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe a value. Okay. So the thing is, uh, this is a set. So you know when we want to relate a set to let's say so things will be a, a little bit complicated, right? So this one a little bit. Uh, catered because uh, we involve a set here. So because the we relate. So then to make things easy, so we define this into here. So fx. It actually defined on a number here, uh, uh, value. So then we can construct this. So T is a number, so that means now we can see this distribution function fx so it defined on r okay so that's why in here in a way so this one is uh, not that complicated so this is a simpler because of a uh, domain Uh, subset. Uh, maybe we basically we, because of uh, it defines on numbers only. Okay, instead of set. So that's why uh, it will be easier. Sometimes we use distribution functions to start uh, to analyze the things. Okay, so next uh, we have a concept of equality of a uh, random variable, so which is slightly different from the user sensor. Okay, uh, we said uh, this x equals to y if only p equals to uh, p equals to x proper one. So not x omega equals to y omega in here. Okay, so uh, the, the idea is like this. Um, When we consider two random variables, we said they are identical. We do not need to require them uh, to be exactly the same. So we allow them to have a small discrepancy. So as long as it's produced the same probability, then we said they are the same. So for example, we can see, uh, just look at example. So let's say if you look at the X, it's like def defined like this. So the graph is like this. So let's say you look at these functions. Okay, so it's like that. So, but not here. 
Yeah, then it dropped to here. Yeah, and then it's straight. Then zero here. Yes. Okay, so this is our function x. Okay, so it one and then zero to here. Okay, let's next we look at this. So you look at y is another functions. Okay, now instead of there are two holes here, so y is a function, we only only take values one. So I think if you look at these two pictures, uh, clearly X and Y are not the same because of uh, for X, there are two holes here, okay? Uh, but the remaining are same. Okay, you can, if you look at here, uh, these two holes will not affect the probability if, if we do as I right? Uh, so that's why we can see uh, X identical to Y. Okay, although, Uh, x not equals to y if you look at a graph okay uh, so that's the ideas rate right? so because we're only concerned with the probabilities for the random uh, induced by the random variable so even these two random variable uh, not exactly the same the sum of value might be varied however if they produce the same probability or the same distributions we say they are identical okay uh, so uh we said two random variables are identical in this sense, okay? so which is slightly different from um, uh, the usual concept, okay? uh, which is a weaker requirement today. Okay? Anyway, uh, we will come back to this later, uh, a little bit more detail in chapter five. Okay, uh, so just just a rough idea. Okay, understand the rough ideas over here first. Okay, okay next. So this is a very important idea, uh, things. Uh, we have uh, three important properties for our distributions functions, okay? So this capital Fx, uh, okay. First, uh, Fx is an increasing functions. Secondly, uh, when x, when t go to negative infinity, it will be zero, when t to positive in one. So this is a right continuous. Okay, so that means uh, uh, when you come from the right, so you can get the value. So I can give you the idea for the graph. So, uh, okay, maybe I will use a graph uh, easier. Yeah. So it will be easier. So again, this is a function from R to R. So let's say this is the domain uh, T, okay? T or X, okay, so let's say uh, this is Y. Okay, okay first of all, uh, this is increasing. So that means the graph is always going up, okay? Going up. And when you go to negative in V with zero, okay, maybe I just draw two lines first. So this is the value one, this is a value zero. Okay, so it's always in between here. When go to negative infinity value zero, so that means it will be really, when you go here, you will be close to zero. When you come to here, it will approach to one, but it might touch or it might, might not touch. Okay, so stuff like that. So, and um, which is increasing, so that means it cannot be like this. Yeah, it cannot be like this. It cannot be like this. Okay, so it's always going up. So, not necessarily continuous, so it can be going up like this. Uh, 
And also, uh, it's right continuous. So that means uh, when you come from the right, you may reach the end. So the end is here. Okay. And this one, no. So there's a hole here. If there's this joint, okay, that's the end here. So there's a hole here. That's the end here. So this is what we, that means when you come from the right side, you, you may stand here, but if you come from left, you cannot stand over here. So this is the property for, uh, this graph can illustrate the, these three property for the distribution functions, okay? Uh, first of all, increasing must be going up like that. Next, uh, when you go to this side, it will approach to X exit. Here we'll go to one, and that is a right continuous. Okay, so uh, let's look at this. So one by one, uh, first, I want to show, uh, this is an increasing, okay, so uh, before that, just uh, this is one, okay. So when S less or equal to T, I think it's clear, right? Uh, this one must be a subset to this, whenever S less or equal to T like this. So then uh, P, of this must be less of equal to this. So because uh, this event is smaller than this event, so the probability for this event must be less or equal to the probability of this event. And by definition, this is a fxs and this fxt. So then this is what we can have. So, uh, so theorem 2.3.1, okay. So we can see, uh, so I'm not going to, uh, the proof is all here. So maybe I would just say this is the sketch of proof. Okay, sketch of proof. Okay, number one. So we have shown that. Uh, okay, we have shown that. This is the case. So according to the definitions, Whenever S less or equals to T implies F X S less or equals to F X T. Okay, so whenever we have this, so then this will simply mean it is increasing. So that's why we get the first one. Okay, next uh, limit things. Um, okay, this one, I just look at one of it. So the other one, you can do it similarly. Yeah? So we look at it, number two. Okay, so limit T to minus infinity Fx of T. Yeah? Okay, so uh, this is equals to this one. Uh, which is actually equivalent to consider uh, this. K to infinity, F of X of negative K, right? Uh, K is an integer. So according to the definitions, so this is equals to limit K to infinity, P of X less or equals to K. Okay, so I think maybe this is the thing. Just pick up this one. Just look, just look at this one. Okay. Right, so. I think, yeah, I think we can. Right, first of all, uh, one and this. First of all, uh, minus one is larger than 
and that's two, right? So that's why. This must include this as a subset, right? Similarly, you look at x less or equals to minus three. Again, minus two is larger than minus three, so you have to include this as a subset. So we follow this process, then we can get it. So if you look at this process, then we can see this is a decreasing sequence of set. So we just go back to our chapter one. Chapter one, chapter zero. So I think not chapter one, this is the chapter one. So go back to our chapter zero. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a chapter one. Mm, okay, so this is the case here. Okay. So let's look at this theorem. Okay, 1.4.3. So, okay, yeah, we are looking at this. Huh? Okay, if Bn is a decreasing sequence, okay, then limit of Pbn will be equals to P of intersection of them. So now if you look at here, so that means now we can take in this to be B1. So less subset, power superset B2 and superset B3, right? Okay. So that means uh, then we can see this is N, uh, Bn is decreasing. Okay. Bn is decreasing. So now we can apply this result. So this is actually this one. So that means it will be the intersection. Okay. So hence, then we can say this is equals to uh, okay p of the intersection of all of them x less or equals to minus k. K is from one to infinity. So how do we get this? So this actually by theorem 1.4.3 b. And if you look at here, you k negative one, negative two, negative three. So this, this thing will end up to be negative infinity, right? And because of uh, x only take a uh, real number, so that's why this will be empty set. P of the empty set, that will be zero. So for the second limit, you can you can get it in a similar way, but the only difference is in the second limit, you're going to use, uh, I think it's an increasing one. Okay, uh, so I leave it to you. You do the exercise, okay, you do it on yourself. Is that, so just an exercise for you. Huh? Okay, so for part three, what is part three? Okay, uh, fx is right continuous. So that means uh, limit, Epsilon to zero positive fxt plus epsilon is uh, fxt. Okay, in fact, uh, this can be proven by using the similar similar ideas here. Okay, okay so maybe since we have started this, right? So let's look at this number three. Okay. So this is what we want: uh, limit epsilon to zero positive f x of t plus epsilon so the proof is similar so what we can do is we can get this is actually limit so uh epsilon go to zero from the right okay so that means uh, it getting zero uh smaller as one so we can say this is a k to infinity 
fx t plus 1 over k. All right, so when k to infinity, 1 over k will approach us to 0. So that's why we can put it in this way. So next, we put in the uh, definitions for f that will be limit k to infinity. So this part will be the probability of x less than or equal t plus 1 over k. So again, same idea, then you can see this x less or equals to t plus 1 over k. So this one, uh, all these are decreasing. You can verify it similar to uh, the case two are decreasing. Okay, so when this is decreasing, so we can refer back to the same formula once again. So we're going to use uh, this formula once again. When we have a decreasing sequence of events, so we can have a formula like this. Yeah. So then we use the same form uh, theorems. And we can see this is equals to uh, P of the intersection of this event x less or equals to t plus 1 over k. Again, uh, k running from 1 to infinity. So, uh, so we have discussed a similar thing in chapter 1 and chapter 0 already. So this one, you guys can check this is less than t. So by the definitions, so this is equals to fx t. So again, you can see uh, it's not difficult. You just, again, you just need to apply theorem 1.3. Point four. Okay, I hope uh, by going through uh, the proof for this, uh, you have some idea how to apply uh, this kind of formula to solve our problems here. Okay, so the next one, uh, we are not going to look at the proof for it. I'll just give you the, the, the ideas for it. Yeah. Uh, any real value function f satisfied the three property above is a distribution of a random variable x. Yeah. So that is the idea for it. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say uh, if we have an x from our previous setting. So uh, this x is a random variable. Yeah, it's a random variable. So if we have a random variable, then we can use this x to construct a px, and then we can use it to construct a fx, right? Uh, so this is something so-called distribution function. Yeah, so it's always fulfilled... Uh, Um, this three, um, one, two, three in theorem two point. 4.3, this is 4, okay? Uh, so if you have a random variable, we can always use this random variable to generate a distribution function. That is something uh, which always fulfill the property 1 to 3 in set, uh, theorem 2.4.3. So this 1, 2, 3, okay? It's always fulfill these three actions, we call it. Uh, now, the reverse process is also true, okay? So that is, supposing we have 
given an x f. Okay, so we don't know that. So we only know this f will fill. Properties one to three in theorems two point three point four. Okay, so in fact we can use it to construct an X, and it can be verified. This X must be a random variable. Okay, yeah, it's sort of like if we have an X, we can use an X to construct something so-called distribution functions, which fulfill the three property that. So the other way around, if we have a, a function which will fill the three action in theorem 2.4.3, we can use this f to construct a random variable. So that means uh, these two are have a, have a relationship between these two concepts. A random variable is always related nicely to something so-called distribution function. Okay? Uh, so however, uh, just to let you know this idea, uh, we are not going to go through the proof for this thing. So since we can always construct a random variable by using something so-called distributions functions. Okay, so uh, we are not looking at proof for it. Okay, so this leave it. Okay, so uh, let's look at um, some examples here. Okay. Okay, first of all, we look at it. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm not going to look at how we're going to construct this, this uh, random variable. However, we can just look at uh, this example here. Then we can see we use it to construct uh, the, the random variable. Okay, let's say we look at this function. Ft is we integrate this e negative t this. Uh, then uh, you guys can work out the calculation. So f satisfy the three properties, one to three in theorem 2.4.3. Okay, so if you consider uh, f of t is equals to this. So, uh, of course, uh, since we didn't mention the uh, property, so that means we always take this as a, uh, what do you call it? Okay, so this is, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean, so this one. Okay, so I think from here, then you can check carefully, uh, uh, easily. So first of all, uh, it's always fulfill the three properties. Eh? So. This is an integration and this is a positive. So then you can see uh, the graph. Maybe you can look at a graph for it. The graph is always like this. This, uh, no, sorry. So this is a graph. And this is a positive function, right? So this is sort of like, a, and this is always a positive. So this one, in a way, you can say this is a, in a way, this is an area. Under. The domain. Okay, so error under domain. So when you increase, so that's why it's always increasing. So that's why uh, if you look at it, so this is uh, provided this is always positive. Okay. So the graph is always positive, then this is always increasing. And also secondly, then you can check easily. So uh, when they go to negative, you get zero. When you go to infinity, you get one. Huh? Yeah, so I think two is also quite three. 
And number three, uh, this is a continuous function. So that's why this is uh, always uh, true. So this is the one. Okay, then uh, you can easily see it's satisfied. It has three properties. Then this is a distribution function. So you can define a property measure. So this is the one. And this is so-called, uh, you can see this is an exponential distributions, right? So you define it, then you can define your, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the random variable on it. So the next examples, uh, this is X defined on this property space, omega, F and P. So uh, X omega equals to zero for all omega in the sample space, okay? So uh, then P of X equals zero is always equals to one. Right, because uh, you only take one value, right? Uh, so this is actually a we so called discrete. So this is actually a discrete one. Okay, so this is a discrete one. So uh, in fact, uh, only one value. Yeah. So that's why uh, x omega zero. So p of x equals to zero is equals to one. So p x will be this. So this one you get it. So that means you can see clearly. So the graph is looks like this. So this is the uh, x exit, this is the axis, this is the value, one. Huh? So this actually solved by the Bernoulli. Uh, okay, so the next one. So omega is a uh, head of tail, so we define uh, x h will be one, x t to be uh, zero. So p, if P assign equal probability on H and T, so that means uh, P X equals zero is half, P X equals to one is also half. So uh, this is actually, uh, you know, this is so-called the Bernoulli distributions. Okay? So we're tossing a fair coin. So in this case, uh, F X will be this. So you can see the graph will be this one. So this is our y exit. So this is our x exit. And this is the value half. This is the value one. So what I want to highlight will be, you can see this bit. Huh? So this is what we so call the uh, right continuous. Okay. So this is a uh, right continuous and uh, right continuous. Okay, yeah, so uh, this is actually, uh, I think we can discuss this first. Uh, later on, we can look at uh, this thing for it. Uh, X is a random variable, so we have a PDF uh, density functions, uh, small f will be given like that. Then the capital F will be this. So this is actually, 
the the idea the you you have you should have already learned this in your probability theory okay okay never mind so we discuss it later mm. maybe we look at it after the our definition 2.5.3 here so i think maybe we just stop here okay uh, i think we stop here and then we we take as usual take a break for half an hour so we carry on our second session on 8 p.m right okay uh i have a question from uh sarkash uh, how many chapter do we have in total uh six okay all together six chapters Okay, let's take a break for half an hour, okay? We come back uh, after 8 o'clock.